I'd love to, you know, hear a little bit about uh, APG. And you guys, you and I were just talking offline about it's really sort of cool how you got started and sort of how your focus is. Um, and so let's just, I want to just want to hear from you. Yeah, I appreciate that, Tim. And first of all, it is great that a platform like Clutch really brings that diversity certification aspect to the forefront. Sure, it's great to have the ability to find companies that are in your geography or have the skill set that you need. But when you layer in that diversity, equity, and inclusion angle, it's really important for firms like ours who are growing. Uh, so I'll tell you a little bit about APG Emerging yeah. Tech. We've been around about five years. Uh, we actually we just hit five years back in August. And we were really founded by two uh, co-founders, one of whom myself was a corporate guy and another was an ex-consultant, spent his career in consulting. And we formulated the company on the idea that we wanted to be um, a partner to our companies that we're working with, thinking from the strategy and planning front through that build and design or design and build and ultimately into how do you engage uh, clients, users when you roll out the end state technology solution. We also wanted to make sure our teams were, we call them ninjas, able to function outside of a core job role or job specificity. It's important that you understand if you're a product person, how engineering works, how quality assurance works, or how design comes together in order to do your best work with a team because technology is a team sport. Yeah, no, that's so true. I mean, you, you find the best, uh, Oh, at least I find our, our best product people, they know how the tech works, right? They don't, they may not code themselves, but they understand what, what's possible. Um, so, all right, we're, we're talking during Hispanic Heritage Month. And um, and so I would just love to hear your perspective on, you know, the, uh, you know, the current state of Hispanic representation in STEM fields. Um, you know, what are the, you know, challenges uh, and opportunities that exist? Uh, and, you know, what what do we do about it? It's interesting, right? There's a Pew study, I think it's a couple years old now, from 2021 that said the Hispanic uh, population, 17% of the workforce, but only 8% of STEM jobs. And I'll guarantee in technology, though I don't have the research to back it up, it's less than 8% when you think about technology roles like the work our company does with our clients. And, and what I think it's interesting is it ties back to there are some cultural reasons there are some access uh, situations or access causes, but at the end of the day, exposure and, um, and opportunity is what will matter to bringing more Hispanic youth and people who are already in the workforce into the technology sphere. So I would say, Tim, what we, want, what we should be doing as business leaders, whether we are Hispanic owned companies or not, is looking for making our presence known in schools, both um, K through 12, uh, university settings, uh, campus recruiting, and go after uh, those populations like the Hispanic and Latinx populations that have so much to contribute, uh, but haven't been given maybe some of that access uh, to date. Yeah, and tech is such a great equalizer too. I mean, it's it's uh, it's so crucial to uh, to just get a broad broad base. So. Um, uh, so in 2023, we've seen a lot of uh, changes in tech. Uh, I don't know if you heard this is a thing called uh, generative AI that came out. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so talk to me about how you guys are, are, are working AI into your workflow and just how, has it changed how you operate and also maybe the companies that you've worked with? Uh, just love to hear how you, uh, how you guys have, have sort of embraced that. Yeah, funny, this generative AI thing you talk about. Let me do some quick research and yeah. see if I can understand it to talk about it. <laughs> Um, it's interesting you say that. Maybe I'll start with a quick explanation for folks who may be trying to piece this all together, right? You're, you're hearing the hype of height of inflated expectations is where we are right now in generative AI. And, um, but it begins with understanding what is AI, what is machine learning, what is natural language processing, because those three things all come together. So very briefly, think of uh, machine learning as teaching a kid to ride a bike. So you got a niece, you got a nephew, you got a child, a son, daughter, and they're learning to ride a bike. You are going to teach them some of those core skills around balance, pedaling, braking. They'll learn from that and then reapply it and ultimately get better. They'll go from a one speed to a 10 speed to a 20 speed bike. That's what natural, uh, that's what machine learning is all about. 
you also have artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence is the idea of taking information that is available and figuring out how to present it back to answer questions or provide information that you've not necessarily had an answer pre-scripted. And then last in this group is natural language processing. Think of Google Translate, Deeple. Those are great translation tools that help you get from point A to point B. And I wrote down a quote here because this is really in telling about natural language processing. Uh, not long ago on Google, you could type, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak, and translate that from English to Russian. And when you did, it came back in Russian, the vodka is good, but the meat is rotten. Okay. <laughs> That, that's the literal word for word translation. And what natural language processing does in this ecosystem of generative AI is it understands intent and meaning. And today, if you type that into Google Translate, you're gonna get something a little closer to the spirit desires, but the flesh is weak, all right? <laughs> Not perfect, but way better than vodka and rotten meat. So <laughs> the, the point is this whole ecosystem of generative AI we've been talking about all of 2023, is really these sub components compiled together to create an opportunity where we can get the right information to the person who needs it at the right point in time, but without you and I and others having to go thumb through notes and, and our overall experience because it, it exists in an ecosystem where it can be pulled and presented forward. So think about generative AI as really a combination of many factors, not this one big sphere, right? The sphere just opened in Vegas. Uh, yeah. over the weekend before we chatted. Uh, it's not the sphere of, of information that already exists. It's constantly being built to help us uh, do things quicker and more efficiently uh, and with more accuracy. Yeah, that's a great explanation because, you, you know, you hear these these terms all being thrown around and they just all get sort of blurred together into, into one big thing. But you're right. It, it, they're very, very different uh, sort of uh, uh, distinctions. So just you know, talk to me about how you know whether it's some of these uh, AI tools or others. Um, how are you using those in your you know your client engagements? You know, uh, personally at our firm, we've begun using generative AI to help with our RFP processing. So oh, wow. if, if anybody out there listening's ever re responded to even one RFP, you know it's minimum 30, 40 questions can be up to a hundred plus and you're constantly tweaking your response to meet the exact need of the exact way that question's worded. Well, dumping all of your RFPs into a generative AI solution allows you to throw in the next question that arises and get a response back. So if you take an RFP data sheet now and you feed it into a generative AI platform like we've built uh, internally, we get a, an answer that's probably 85, 90% good, we can tweak it more quickly and that RFP all of a sudden becomes a lot less labor intensive for us as a company. God, that's right. brilliant. I can't tell you how many uh, RFPs you've, you have looked at and said, oh, this is a nightmare. <laughs> exactly. Hey, by the way, plug for Clutch. One yeah. of the best things about Clutch is we're often getting uh, pinged by clients who are interested in working with us who aren't necessarily looking for an RFP. It's not some of these state and large uh, RFP processes enterprises are using. So it's a great way for us to meet some new clients and also have a deeper conversation because they're getting past that. Who are you and do you have the capability because they see that on Clutch and instead we jump right into the, let's figure out how we can partner to help you solve your business opportunity or problem. That's great, that's great to hear. Um, so talk to me about, uh, you know, um, those people looking to start a career in tech, where are the big opportunities? Well, if you were going to start, if you were going to start again tomorrow, like where would, where would you look? I'd start in roles that didn't exist five and 10 years ago. So the data world is a big one. Um, prompt engineering with generative AI is getting a lot of attention right now. Uh, I have a nephew, smart kid, constantly asking why. Uh, when he was three years old, he'd point at the fan and say, these, these. And what he was trying to ask was, what is that and what is it doing, right? <laughs> so if you've got a child or a nephew or a niece that is that kind of inquisitive, why, why, why? Prompt engineering and generative AI is that ability to take that curiosity and use it to figure out how to manage natural language processing, machine learning, and ultimately the AI output. So that's a great place to dip your toe in. Uh, something else that I think is really interesting is um, uh, cybersecurity. 
right? Cybersecurity roles, that all envelops around this ecosystem of AI or platforms and technology, data, um, security. Those roles are getting even more in demand. And I would definitely say, look at that. But I think the number one thing beyond a couple of roles that are out there is thinking about it as wherever you are in your career to get into tech does not mean you have to jump out of what you're doing and into an engineering role. There are lots of ways to get involved with tech that are more like my background, business, product, and the tie into technology. Uh, I think I mentioned offline, I have a daughter who's, uh, who's in CS. I'm definitely gonna tell her about prompt engineering because she's one of those kids that was always asking like, why, why, why? <laughs> uh, all right, so 2024, what are you uh, most looking forward to? I am looking forward to uh, generative AI no longer being this giant hype that we talk about 100% of the time um, and actually getting to some practical applicability where we have some really strong results and use cases, both we APG merging tech as a firm and the industry as a whole. I think the second thing is maybe we'll land this idea of whether we're going to have the R word in the economy or whether we're going to end up with a soft landing. That'd be nice to get that finally out of the way. I feel like we came into this year and most of this year have continued to ask the question, what's going to happen? So I hope that that will be uh, part of it. Uh, but lastly, I think the third thing for me, collaboration. Uh, I was at Health Connect South two weeks ago here in the Atlanta region, and we talked extensively about how healthcare, health technology is nothing more than a really giant collaboration. And industries, I think, where the collaborative collaboration exists between philanthropic, between um, for-profit, between technology, between patient providers, between payer systems, uh, and you apply that into any industry vertical, that collaboration is going to propel those industries forward in 2024. Oh, that's great. Um, well, hey, Luke, really great talking to you. Uh, I wish the best for uh, for you and APG in, uh, in 2024. And obviously, uh, anytime we can help, I'd uh, love to do it. Much appreciated, Tim. Thank you guys for this opportunity. We'll talk again soon.